Welcome back to Sound Bites, the show about good people doing good things in the local food and drink industry. And today I'm speaking with Danny O'Hearn of Nine Locks Brewing. Uh, Danny and his cousin, Sean, uh, decided to make a microbrewery back in 2014. I've had the pleasure of knowing Sean and his father, John, for many years. And and I know Danny comes from a really long line in the brewing industry. So it's my pleasure to welcome Danny to our show. Welcome, Danny. Good morning. So tell me a little bit about that decision back in 2014. Before we'll talk a little bit about the industry, but maybe just tell me about what what inspired you to to, to open a, a microbrewery. I know that Sean and his dad had the the, the brew pub, and you were working for Moose Idea, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, so how does that conversation <laughs> unfold? Well, we were neighbors. I mean, uh, I actually just recently moved last year, so we're not neighbors, but still in the same lake. So. As being neighbors and cousins, you know, we hung out a lot um, you know, because I would visit him as a sales rep for Moosehead, visiting the bar. And, uh, you know, we just started talking. We talked beer a lot. Yeah. And uh, we were sitting up by the fire. And this is, this stuff isn't made up. We're sitting by a campfire drinking and, uh, you know, enjoying a nice beverage. And uh, he says to me, he says, what do you think about opening our own craft brewery? Because Sean having the rock bottom and they had beer, but they couldn't sell it because yeah. of the rules in the NSLC, they couldn't sell it off site. So, you know, we talked about it. We had several meetings. Um, I think the staff at the mustache must have thought I was buying the mustache. I share so much. <laughs> and uh, it just went from there. So finally one day he said, you know, yes. And I was probably about two years away from retiring. Um, <laughs> welcome to retirement <laughs> welcome to retirement yeah and, uh, so we said yeah and we, and we started and we you know we opened up on february 29th and which is a leap year which is funny because we're legally well our anniversary is two-year anniversary is just coming up next year Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Well, just uh, a, a new brewery on the scene. Uh, yeah. But you guys have really enjoyed some immense growth uh, in the last decade since you've been, or almost decade, I guess. And and we've seen that similar growth within, which is exciting to see in craft beer. I mean, wine, ciders, RTD, distilleries, all that. Um, but I think, you know, the reality is, and you can probably articulate better than most, is that you know, the craft brewing industry is not as romantic probably as people think it is. I'm sure it's a lot of hard work and it's a lot of numbers game and and tight margins. And, and you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've got a lot of news around the, the federal government raising excise tax on, on beer. Does Is that a, a significant impact when we look at the cost of beer or has that maybe been played up a little too much? I, I think it's been played up some. I mean, uh, our concern is it's every year and nobody made a big deal of it with one and a half, two percent. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't much of an issue. Uh, but this year with a, I think it was 6.5% or 6.3% increase, uh, it had a little more effect on, uh, on our product and it's a tax that's tied to recession. Uh, so if interest, uh, inflation's high, the excise tax goes up. Uh, it's probably one of the few taxes out there that uh, are like that. <laughs> and uh, it was voted down in the House. Um, the leader of the opposition uh, put a motion forward and it was voted down. And it's interesting, all the liberal entities in Nova Scotia voted for it. <laughs> there you go. Um, so, you know, and, and if we look at, but re, in the reality, we've looked at any, I, I was looking at uh, online and looking at a can of, Dirty Blonde, which I assume is your bestseller, or, or yes. if, um, and it's five dollars and five cents now um, at the NSLC. No, an, uh, admittedly, that sounds like an awkward price. Um, but um, so, what are the what are the real reasons for like we've seen an increase? Probably, I don't know, maybe even over the last year, probably fifty cents on a can. Uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, is it input costs? What's really is it supply, well, the same kind of supply chain issues and input cost problems that are led to grocery store inflation too, or? Uh, we've had two forced price increases by the NSLC this year, something I've never seen in my years in the industry. Uh, they're usually the April increase, uh, but never two, uh, two forced increases. So we took, uh, we took a small increase in the spring, uh, 
then in October, the NSLC slapped an increase on us. And then again, this year, they're slapping another increase on us. Um, so as a small supplier, you know, you really feel those. And in times of, if it's a recession, whatever you want to call it, uh, people sometimes may stray away from mm. little premium price product and go buy the cheap stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, and I would think that, you know, there's a lot of been work done to to build craft brewing here and, and, and a lot of, you know, and, and it's hard, you know, I think it's, you know, the community wants to support local, but it's hard when, um, when it gets to a price like you know that that i guess you're probably right that it, you know um price elasticity and 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 uh, people can't just always afford more to pay more um so you know what else can be done to kind of support crap brewing so i know too that you're kind of teetering on the legality are you still kind of in that old teetering on the legality of being craft now just because of your well, success still crap but they've um... <clears throat> The liberals a few years ago uh, changed it from if you're under 15,000 hectoliters, you're, you know, a craft brewers, whatever they decided. And then they tried to put a, uh, uh, something in there. If you reach $750,000 in sales, uh, we go from a 40% tax to an 84.4% tax increase. So it does have an effect. The conservative has just made a change to basically help us out. Uh, okay. It doesn't affect a lot of the other small breweries. Okay. So they've changed it to a million dollars. So that helps us. It gets us through this year. But next year with the new facility, we will surpass the million dollars in sales right. and liquor consumption. Yeah. So, I mean, long-term vision, if, if, if our goal is to have craft brewing be successful and, 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 and honestly drive a lot of, uh, dollars back to our community in multiple ways through uh, how you're the multiplier effect of being at restaurants and licensees, the number of people you employ, I guess, is that ultimately, should there be maybe a more realistic level? Of, uh, because I think we see in like places like Ontario, um, isn't craft brewing something of the nature of like 400,000 hectoliters? Yeah. We're the lowest in the, in, in the country. Yeah. And uh, we've been working with the government. They have been open to do meetings with us. Uh, it's, our proposal is to help every craft brewery. So uh, the percentage of increase of taxes they would pay would be based on how much you produce. Uh, because we go over that 15000 to $1 million mark, now we're marked on the same as uh, the largest brewery in the world, the largest yeah. beer company in the world, uh, ABM Bev which is the Bathurst and Poland Birds and Halifax. And I can't buy a can the same price they can. I can't buy a lid. You know, our buying power is nowhere near as there, but the government expects us to pay the same tax rate. And it is challenging, you know, and it will be challenging for us to. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a significant addition to your your bottom cost. I mean, that's not, not, it's not a couple pennies. That's, uh, no. that's, that's real money. Yeah. Um, so, but you know, uh, obviously you can't, you're in the situation where you're, you're, you're growing. I mean, yeah. people love your product, right? So, yeah. uh, you keep growing. So why, you know, should, why is it important, you know, even with that, uh, you know, for locals to continue to support locals? <laughs> I'm a firm believer in buying local for anything. Um, uh... When I go to the NSLC, I buy local wine. Uh, it might be a little more expensive, but I support the industry. Uh, if people can do that and the things they buy, and it, it makes a big difference. It creates jobs, it saves jobs. Uh, and if everyone just says, well, that's not my responsibility, well, it might be if you're the one who loses the job someday yeah. because of people not buying local. The best way to support local breweries is buy it at the they're beer stores. Right. They're, they're all over the province. There's lots in Halifax. But if you can take that extra trip where you're driving by us or any other local craft brewery in the province, stop in there and buy your beer. Because the breweries make more money off the beer purchased at our stores than we do from the NSLC. Yeah, I mean, you, I don't know. I mean, it's probably, I don't, we won't go into the, the actual markup, but I mean, it's significant. It's not it 
again, it's not probably a dime or a quarter. It's a, it's a dollar or two more. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, but, you know, despite the pressures of the business, you're doing lots of great things. And I thought one of the great stories about Nine Locks over the last couple of years is some of the initiatives that you've been doing to not only support our community, but support communities in places further afield. Maybe you could talk a bit about a couple of the projects that you've done that really have yeah. helped people uh, on, on the other side of the water, really. Yeah, we've, uh, when we started the company, Sean and I said we always want to give back. We have a, a policy here called Nine Locks Gives Back. And it's not only just local, but it's, we have stepped up with uh, uh, Julio Putin. Putin Julio is the beer there that we did for the Ukraine. It's uh, a crap brewery in Ukraine that called out crap breweries around the world to do this. And they gave us the recipe, took the logo, and we gave 100% of the profits. Uh, so we made absolutely nothing on this. 100% of the profits went to Ukraine and raised over just over $20,000. Um, Rise from the Rubble is our latest latest brand that we've uh, supporting the earthquake in Syria and Turkey. And again, 100% of the profits will go to that cost. Um, we don't just put a beer out there and say a dollar goes to it. Uh, we take 100%. So we make nothing off these brands at all. And that's really given back the way I see it. Uh, locally, we've been involved in a lot of local events. Uh, we're uh, quite a big uh, donation to the Dartmouth General Hospital over the last couple of years, a substantial amount of money, and uh, that's just part of you know what mm -hmm. we do. Yeah. Uh, and I guess you know is that part of the the why uh, Nine Locks is so successful? I'm guessing is that you're part of a community. Yes, I think being involved in community helps. Uh, people from Dartmouth feel real attraction towards our product, mm -hmm. and some of our sales numbers are uh, the best in the Dartmouth liquor stores. Hopefully that's a reflection. Do some people care? Probably not. Um, do we care? Yes, we do. It's, uh, it's, you know, it's part of our, it's part of who we are as a company. Amazing. And so, you know, you guys are probably in as much as, uh, you know, it's uh, still a little cool outside, but you're probably in the real thinking about the the, the hot days that are coming stage, I'm guessing, that uh, this is going to be a real interesting time on planning for a brewery when you're gearing up for the summer. So what what can we expect from Nine Locks this summer? Well, um, we also have, we launched brands in the liquor store, but we also brought lost brands just in our store. So this is the new trail mixer, the vodka soda that we'll be um, launching a liquor store. Um, there's the pomegranate in it, the lemon lime, the raspberry dragon fruit, and our new one is the mango peach, which we've been selling in our store for a short period of time now. And we're having great success with it. People are just loving it. So that, that's a big, uh, it's a little bit off the beer yeah. that we do, but we're a beverage company, not just a big yeah. brewery. And uh, there's a lot of growth in that segment. And we just feel we can't sit by and not be part of that. Uh, yeah, it's it is exciting times for uh, RTD. Uh, I think probably a category ten years ago we thought nothing, of, very little about, uh, and now uh, exponential growth. We we'll see yes. lots of interesting stuff going on locally, uh, yeah. and glad to see that Nine Locks is part of that that trend. So yes. I think uh, one, you know, I've always loved seeing what you guys do for. Uh, local community, but I think the initiatives you've done across the sea has been really impressive too. And that's in really, I think we should all appreciate companies like Nine Locks for all of the, that you do to give back. So from uh, us here at Saltwater and uh, uh, my show, I just want to say thanks to you for doing all the good stuff you do in the in our community. Yeah, and, and that goes right back to our, our supporters, our customers, our followers thank those people for supporting us for coming in and buying products and telling people how much they like the products uh, word of mouth goes a long way and it's really helped our business